But see, this message today is for somebody who's going through something. See, this message today is for somebody who needs something. See, this message today is for, is for somebody who's expecting something. Amen. See, but more than that, to expect something, you have to have some, and I hate to use the word in the definition, you have to have some expectations. You have to, you have to know what you're going for. If you was going to a fish market, you're probably looking for fish. See, we need somebody in there here. Need, I need a blessing in my life. I need a breakthrough in my life. I need a change in my life. You know, I need something, Lord. I, if it's nothing but a new pair of shoes from Lord. This message is for somebody who needs something today in their life. Amen. And I know you need something because you wouldn't be here today Amen. to hear the words that God is going to come through me with. I'm going someplace with this this morning, church. Amen. Amen. I was watching football yesterday. I, I do that every now and then, Saturdays and Sundays and sometimes Thursdays and Fridays. <laughs> but I do it every now and then. <laughs> this young man, he's a great running back, and I can't remember what college. That's not important. His name is Chase. And I said I wasn't going to forget it because Onassis. Oh, Chase Onassis. And, you know, you look at him, and it's not one of them Afrocentric names. He's a black guy. He's like, you know, he's not an Abdullah or anything like that. He's Chase Onassis. And he said when he got older, he asked his parents, why would you name me Chase Onassis? And his father said Chase is one of the biggest banks in America. <laughs> and Onassis was a billionaire and one of the biggest shipping magnets in the world. Amen. He said, I gave you a name. That's going to mean something to you in life that you can hold on to when times get tough. Amen. And you will become a success because of your name. My Lord. Hmm. See, I got a father okay. whose name is above all names. Amen. And I heard and I read some place where it says, those who are called by my name, Amen. if you will humble yourself, See, y'all ain't getting it this morning. A name that's above all names. See, when you down low, and you know, I might only be here 10 minutes, but this is going to be one of the best 10 minutes. He said, if you would humble your, if you call by my name. See, let me explain something about a name. You know, when your kids are acting bad, and I've said this thing about four times from here. When your kids are acting bad and you're called in school for work, you know, it's a lot on your mind. You know, you got the belt, the switch, the like, ironing cord, extension cord. You got all you got murder in your mind. But when you get there and that man, that woman, that principal, that teacher, that disciplinarian, they say something wrong about your kid. No matter how bad you know your kid is. But it's something about his name. Because his name is a derivative of what? Your name. That's your son. That's your daughter. And I don't care if he set this place on fire. He did it because it was just too cold in this building. <laughs> it's something about a name, church. See, we don't take it enough. You know, I, it, it, whew, this morning I was coming out, I was telling my nephew, I said, you know, I, I'm going to talk about this name. And Kurt Franklin got on there something about the name of Jesus. And Shirley Caesar said, I just call on his name. And I said, live and he loved me. I, just, I said this all the time when things go wrong in my life. Died, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far away. I'm not going to sing. I'm going to tell you what this thing say now. It says, rise, he justified, and he freed me forever. One day he's coming back, glorious day. I just want to go back to that thing where it says, rise, and he justified me. Freed me forever. He didn't free me until the next thing. He freed me forever. See, ooh. It's something about his name, church. See, when the bills are bigger than my money, when the illnesses are bigger than my pill, nothing is bigger than the name of Jesus. See, I, it, you ain't getting it this morning because somebody should just be saying, thank you, Lord, and I'm finished. I don't need to hear no more from that guy. I can walk out right now because it ain't the name of Tony. It ain't the name of Todd. It's the name of Jesus that we're talking about today. It ain't in his glory. It ain't First Baptist. It ain't I'm the highest tither. It ain't none of those things. It's something about that name. You know, and I, I'm not going against anything nobody else preach. I can't do that, uh. Pastor Jonathan said it was about this bird. He said it's something about the bird. He get his wings together. I said, but the bird don't know nothing else but to fly. It's, you know, I told the kids back there, it's do or die. When that big mother bird push him out, he can't think about swimming. He can't think about worms. He 
he can't think about work. He can't think about if the other little bird's going to fly later on. He don't think about what the birds are wearing. He don't think about his claws too small. He stretches his wings and he starts to flapping because he expects to fly. See, sometimes when you're out there and you praying and you're doing all those things you're doing, all you need to say, I expect the name of Jesus to bring some change in my life for one reason, because his name is holy and it's above all other names. But he says in 1 Samuel 12 and 22, because some of y'all think I, was, I have a Bible, but I got one right here. It says, for the Lord will not forsake his people for his great name's sake, because it was pleased, it has pleased the Lord to make you his people. Once you accept him, it ain't about you no more. His name is holy. See, I want you to get this word holy in your mind. Holy is his name. We're talking about perfection, something that you cannot see with your imperfect eyes. I don't care if you had LASIK or if you got four or five pair of glasses on your eyes like I do. You can't see perfection. That's right. And guess what he can't see and be in a in 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 uh, neighborhood of sin. But now once he called you his people, first family, you said for his name's sake, to keep his name holy, he will reach down to your situation and change it. So it too become righteous. It too become holy. Not that whatever you're doing, he's going to okay it. And I'll give you an example of that. Uh, Hezekiah had a problem. He was dying. He was on his deathbed. And he prayed. And if you read before that, it's in uh, Kings, 2 Kings, uh, chapter 19. If you read that, but 20 is where I want to be. He's, he's talking to him. He says, Lord, do this for me. I'm, the, I'm your people, this and that. I don't want to die. You know, you're God and you can do all things. I'm, you know, I'm paraphrasing. There's no silly style. But what happened was, God said, I'm going to do these things for my own sake. I'm going to give you 15 more years, Hezekiah, for my name's sake. Some of you in situations right now, you praying to God in your name and everybody else's name, and you know you're doing all the right stuff. You're rolling on the ground. You didn't tore your clothes. You didn't put, you know, you did all kind of stuff. Burns, incense, you didn't did all kind of things. You did it. And I'm not making fun of that. But you got to understand, challenge God on his own ground. Amen. Say, Lord, I ain't got it all together. But I'm trying. Amen. Lord, I ain't walking right right now. But I'm trying. I understand that you're a holy God. But what I want you to do right now, Lord, not for my sake, but for your name's sake. Because I've told people that I'm a Christian. I told them I go to end his glory. I told them I sit there Sunday for Sunday. I told them that I believe in you. But now for your name's sake, so it can keep your name straight, help me out. Amen. For his name's sake. Say, Lord, I done wrote some checks in my own name. I try to do it myself. I done went to everybody I can go to. Them the checks that I wrote on my own. I done did some things I ain't supposed to. Went some places I ain't supposed to go. I done said some things to people I ain't supposed to say to. Right after church, I done cursed somebody out, Lord. <laughs> and if I didn't, I felt like it. <laughs> Them the things I did in my name, see. So I don't want them to think I'm soft. I don't want them to think because I'm a Christian, I'm a punk. You know what I'm saying? I did that in my name's sake. Now I'm trying to figure out why my world is flipped upside down. Amen. Say Psalm 30. Y'all know this one. Y'all might want to beat me to the end, but don't y'all just hold on. Psalm 30 and 5 says, for, anger, for, for his anger is but for a moment. His favor is for life. Right. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Glory. If God sets your clock, how do you know night from day? How are you sitting there saying, it's dark right now, Lord, I don't know what's going on. And you might not believe in what I'm telling you. But in 2 Corinthians 4 and 17, it says, for our light afflictions, and that was what Pastor Lou was talking about. See, I'm going to tell you, they was in my word. It says, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us for a far more exceedingly external weight of glory. This thing that I'm going through right now is just momentary. It's just temporary. It's just getting me ready. It's like my mama pushed me to the edge of the nest. But when I get pushed over the edge, all I'm going to do is fly. And that's what you got to understand. No matter where you're at today, 
He's setting you up not for just tomorrow, but for all your tomorrow. Yeah. It's for all your day, all your dark times, all your ways. Right. And if you ask why, Lord, why me and you his people, it's for his name's sake. Amen. See, we got to understand that it ain't about you all the time. You know, you like say, I got a personal relationship with him. Yeah, that's true. But your personal relationship with him is just like a personal relationship with my hammer. You're the tool that he's going to use to build a kingdom called the kingdom of heaven. Amen. No, I'm going to go in there, Lord, I'm going to go in there, I'm going to give you a praise so loud, and I'm going to reach deep in my heart, saying that I don't care what it looked like today. This is just a moment that you was telling me about, that my, my forever is going to be okay. I don't care what it looked like to everybody else. I don't care what everybody else like. I don't care what the bird next to me feathers look like. I'm going to do the thing that's, that's good for me. I know what my personal relationship is. I'm a hammer, and I'm going to hammer all night. Rise, and he justified and freed me forever. See, he freed me from that stuff. Because you know what? I asked the undertaker just the other week. Have you ever seen a hearse with a big old thing behind it with full of clothes and gold and diamonds? I said, did you ever read in the Bible where Jesus said, how much do you got? And I can see if I got a spot for you. I never read that I had to be buried in a certain way, in a certain style. I don't need those things to make it to heaven. I don't need those things to maintain a relationship with my father. Because, see, he takes me as I am. Because, see, I was just like Job, and he might have took all my stuff. And I was like Abraham and might have wanted to lie about a situation. See, I might have been just like that jackal called, uh, 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 they changed, I can't think of who it was, but we're going to skip him, go to somebody else. I might have been just like Jonah and said, Lord, I don't want to go there and talk to them people because they don't like the way I look or like the way I talk. And he might have sent a big fish my way, and that's where I end up talking to anyway. See, he's the father and I'm the son. He's the master and I'm the servant. Where he called me to go, I always hope I have the fortitude to go. The words he put in my mouth, I hope I always have the heart to speak. That's the relationship that I want to have with my father. There's something that says whatever I'm going through today is going to make me better tomorrow. He can't lie. He don't have to repent. And in that, you understand the perfect of God. And I, I'm not saying you understand everything and walk out of here and, 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 and say all 66 books and all the verses in the Bible. That's not what I'm talking about. But there's something about you say, you know what? That's my father, and he understands. And Father, I'm trying to. I'm trying to. I'm trying to, I'm trying to understand. I'm trying to see what you're trying to tell me. But you know what I'm going to do, Lord? I'm going to lay it on your lap. And where it takes me, I'm sure you're going to be there to meet me. And if this thing take me from this world, because my relationship is right with you, all it's going to do is let me wake up in glory where there ain't no more nighttime. So then I don't have to go back to Psalm 30 and 5. It don't make no sense to sing, weeping may endure for a night when the sun don't ever stop shining. You know, all these things work out for my good when I'm in heaven singing with the heavenly host. I don't need the Bible no more. The word will be made plain. You know, people say, I got this question for God when I get there. I got this question for God when I get there. So what makes you think you'll be able to speak in his presence? When you get in front of the judge at court, you ain't got nothing to say. You can't even say innocent. <laughs> but all of a sudden, you're going to get in front of a big and powerful God. Now you got a whole repertoire conversation with him. That just tells me you don't understand who my father is. Amen. We have to learn to turn to Jesus. Don't need to go back to writing those checks. Sometimes we need to put our checkbooks away. There's an old saying on the block that says, your mouth that wrote a check that you're behind can't cash. And any one of y'all out here, I know, and I'm looking right now, maybe the two teenagers sitting back there, they might haven't done it yet, but they've done it too. But spiritually, church, we have, wrote some, we have written some checks that we can't cash. If it wasn't signed in the blood of Jesus, we all would be condemned. But since these checks, are written on the account of God in the name of Jesus. We are assured of our salvation. Don't let the world tell you nothing different, church. 